Hi, in this video we are going to solve some problems with Pythagoras theorem. There may be some problems in geometry which we must be using Pythagoras theorem and we should be able to see a right angled triangle in it. Now let's look at this example. It says find the area and perimeter of this rectangle and we know that rectangles interior angles are 90 degrees, right? So basically, you can notice a right angle triangle here, right? And let's think about what the question is asking. It's area and perimeter. For area and perimeter, I need to know all sides. Well, this one I know. It's 2.8 because opposite sides in a rectangle are equal, fine. But how about this side? I don't know that. But by using Pythagoras, I can calculate that. So let's do this. So hypotenuse is the side across 90 degree angle, so it's 6.1. So I go like 6.1 squared equals this side, x squared. You can give any letter you'd like, a, b, c, whatever. It's x squared now, let's say. And plus 2.8. 8 squared. So if you do the calculations, you get 37.21 equals x squared plus 7.84. Now I have to leave x squared alone. This means I have to take away 7.84 from both sides. Or you just take it to the other side, it's the same thing. You get x squared to be 29.84. 3, 7, which you have to take the square root of both sides so that you'll end up with x and remember you always get a negative and a positive value when you take the square root of a number but just because this is geometry we have to use the positive value because distance or length cannot be negative so that's gonna be 5.41 four, one, nine, and so on. Well, all these numbers are up to one decimal place, so I'm going to cut it from here and say this is approximately 5.4 up to one decimal place. So now that I know the length of this side, 5.4, and I can say 5.4 here as well, I can calculate the area and the perimeter. So Area will be 2.8 multiplied by 5.4. I just multiply the adjacent sides, right? And the answer will be 15.12 centimeters squared, right? And for perimeter, I have to add the side length. So it will go like, it doesn't matter which corner you start with. I choose this one, you could choose any other corner, vertex, and it doesn't matter which direction you go, you could go like this or this, I'll go like this, so it's 5.4 plus, now I go this way, 2.8 plus, now I go this way, 5.4 again, plus I go this way to reach where I started, so it's 2.8 again, and the answer will be 16.4 centimeters. You can also do this calculation. So you can go like, I, you can say I add 5.4 and 2.8, right? And just because each of these numbers appear twice in this calculation, you can just double it. Yeah, you can also find the perimeter like this, if it's a rectangle. So you see that the missing side can be found by using Pythagoras, and then we can answer the question. Now let's look at this example. In this one we have two right triangles, and we have to find the value of x. Now you can see that it's the hypotenuse for this triangle. However, we don't know this length, which is one of the 
right sides for this triangle, but also it is the hypotenuse for the other triangle. So basically, we can calculate the hypotenuse by using these values, and then we can use this side length as the right side for this second triangle, and do Pythagoras again, so that we can find the value of x. So let's do that. So I'm going to go like, let's call this as y, right? So I'll go like y squared, because it's a hypotenuse, it's going to be isolated, is 8 squared plus 4 squared, and that's going to be 64 plus 16. So I'm going to end up saying y squared is 80. So when I take the square root of both sides, I'll say y equals 8.944 and so on. And let's write this up to one decimal place. Doesn't matter. It doesn't state in the question. So let's go with this. So it's y equals 8.9. Right? Centimeters, let's say. Now that I know y, which is 8.9, I can use it as one of the right sides in this triangle. So let me do the calculation here. It's going to be x squared equals 5 squared plus, now that I know y, I'm going to write its value, 8.9 squared. So that's going to be x squared equals 25 plus 79.21. We will come back to this. Now, let's go on with calculations. It's going to be... Um, 79.21 plus 25, which is 104.21, right? And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and I'll call x to be 10.208 and so on. So it's going to be 10.2. Now, did you notice something with this number? We took the square of 8.9, which we rounded from here, because it was square root of 80. Yeah? So just because we rounded this decimal to 8.9, we didn't end up with 80 when we take the square of it, but we ended up with 79.21. Now, this is actually a big error. Okay? Now, in IGCSE, while marking, examiners will check the mark scheme. If the mark scheme accepts this answer that you reach with the rounded square, right? If you get this, then, and if you, if this is in the mark scheme, you may get your mark. But if it isn't there, if you're supposed to use this 80, then it could be a problem. So my suggestion, this is fine, you can use this. But at the end of the day, you have this y squared equals 80. So why not using square root of 80 squared, right? Because this was square root of 80, and we rounded it. So square and square root will cancel each other. You're going to end up with x squared equals 25 plus 80, which would be 105. And when you take the square root... We get x equals 10.2469 and so on. Now, before it was 10.208 and so on, you can see the difference. Now, if you're rounding to one decimal place or three significant figures, fine. There is no difference. You're going to have the same 10.2 here, but Look at this number. If you cut it from here, you end up with 4. It could be 5 or bigger. Then your number would turn to be 10.3. Yeah? And if the mark scheme accept this, but not this, then you will lose one mark, the accuracy mark. So you must be careful with rounding. Which means try not to round your answers in the middle of your calculations. Let's see one last example. Work out the area of the triangle below. Now, to find the area of any 2D shape, you must find out a 
base and the height. Now, and you know, you multiply these. If it's a rectangle square, then it's base times height. If it's a triangle, you also have to multiply it with 1 over 2, or basically divide by 2. But the thing is, base, one of these sides, and height, right? These two must be perpendicular, meaning there must be a 90 degree angle in between base and height, right? That's why we cannot just find the area by multiplying 4.7 and 2.6 because the angle between them is not 90 degrees. It's not given as 90 degrees, so I can't say it's 90 degrees. But there is a 90 degree angle here, so I can say if this is the base, I can say this is the height or vice versa. If, you know, this one is the height and this is the base. Now, Whatever the names are, I don't know the length of this side. So, first I have to apply Pythagoras to find that length. Let's call it as A, right? So, this is the hypotenuse across 90 degree angle. So, 4.7 squared equals 2.6 squared plus A squared. And when we do the calculations, we find A to be... 3.915 and so on, which will round to one decimal place, let's say, 3.9, right? So if A is 3.9, now I can use this as height, this as base, or vice versa, but I can do the calculation for the area. So area will be one half of 3.9 times 2.6 which will be 5.07 centimeters squared. So that's the area. If I was to be asked to find the perimeter, I would just add these after doing Pythagoras, right? So these are the problems you can solve by using Pythagoras theorem to find the missing sides. Now it's your turn. Please solve these questions and submit your answers online to check whether your answers are correct or not. Now, while solving the questions, please round your side lengths only, right? Round side lengths to one decimal place. One decimal place. This is very important so that you can find correct values. Thanks for watching.